let's look at what is the kind of questions that code vita actually asks and a lot of students are actually in confusion that what which kind of questions will they ask if i just revise my subjects is that enough should i just revise my subjects and i'll be ready for that well no uh, let me show you some kind of questions that code vita can actually ask and the major thing about code vita is in the pre-qualifier round they are not going after complexity they are not really going after do you know any graph algorithms do you know any dynamic programming they are not going after all these advanced data structures or anything they are going for simple concepts but a combination of these simple concepts let me give you an example you might have seen this kind of a series before this is a very simple pattern and if you have done computer science in your first year that is c programming or c++ programming or whatever if you have done that in your first year then this kind of a pattern is very simple it's very similar it's very familiar you have to print this pyramid sort of a thing with stars code beta will never ask you this question code beta will ask you a combination of these things what it will do is okay very good you have a pyramid and you have to print this pyramid but each element of that pyramid is part of another series for example it could just be that the first element here is part of your Fibonacci series. The second element is the second element of your Fibonacci series. The third element is the third uh, element of the Fibonacci series. So now you have to combine two concepts. First concept is how to even print, print a pyramid. So even if you know how to print the pyramid, the second concept after that is how do I uh, calculate the Fibonacci series? And then once I've calculated the Fibonacci series, my third concept is to combine both the pyramid and the Fibonacci series. Now, if you look at all of these questions separately, that is printing a pyramid, it's okay, it's decent, it's easy, I maybe after some revision, I can do it. If you look at the concept of Fibonacci series, yes, in my computer science class, that is one of the first things I learned, with the, enough revision, I can do it. But what Code Beta is doing is, it is saying that you have to mix these two problems, mix these two solutions, and combining those two solutions, you have to come up with the overall solution. So now in this question, there was only about two sub problems. In some of the code beta problems, there will be five, six sub problems. And for each sub problem, first what you have to do, first you have to even understand that this question can be broken down into one, two, three, four, five, five sub problems. And for each sub problem, then it has to further be seen how to do this sub problem and how to combine this sub problem into an overall solution. So that is the trick or the shortcut with code beta. If you think that you will solve the entire problem in one function or just by 10 lines of code, that is not possible. You have to solve it step by step. You have to break it down into different problems and then combine all of those problems. The second thing that you, uh, second type of problems that you can face with code beta is you'll be given something like this. Maybe you're given this map and this map has, as you can see, two red um, uh, cells. And generally speaking, you will be told, okay, this map is in the form of 2D arrays, so you need to know how to even go through a 2D array. And in this 2D array, there are two uh, red dots. You have to find out the distance between the two dots. Except that the dots are strings instead of numbers. So the distance between the two, uh, the two cells are not calculated in terms of numbers, but it is calculated in terms of strings. So now you see, here you need to know the concept of a 2D array. You also need to know the concept of strings. And you need to know how you can define a custom function for finding the distance between the st between two strings. Like I said, code beta is about solving a problem step by step. If you try to solve the problem in just one go, in like in one attempt, it's just not possible. Uh, it will take you a lot of time and you will get confused. You will miss out many of the edge cases. Uh, and we'll come to edge cases later. But if you try to break down the problem into small, small steps and then try to solve it, then it will become easier for you. And that is what Code Vita or TCS is actually looking for. They're looking for people who can break down the problem into small steps. And once they've broken down the problem into small steps, how they can combine the solutions. So this is what Code Vita tests generally look like. Uh, I'll take a small example for you and then you'll understand what to do. Uh, but just before the example, what are the tools that you actually need to know to crack code vita well the tools you need to know is number one you need to have familiarity with one programming language
that is if you are not familiar with any of the programming languages provided by TCS code beta um, they are C C++ C sharp Java PHP Perl Python Ruby if you are not familiar with any of these coding languages then it becomes even more difficult for you to crack code beta but if you have done simple hello world problems if you've done simple for loops while loops if you've done simple arrays 2d arrays in any of these languages whichever language doesn't matter but any of these specific languages these eight languages then you're good to go then you can actually start your practice but if you are not familiar with any of these languages then please don't go uh, ahead with the practice of code beta that's the first part the second thing is many students get confused Sir, I am good at C, but I want to learn Python. So shall I start the code beta practicing in Python? No, please don't do that. Start with the language that you are most comfortable in. Don't go for the language that you want to learn. TCS code beta doesn't really care which language you do as long as you get the output. So don't struggle for, oh, Python is a better language. Therefore, I will start Python. No, if you are comfortable in C, if you're comfortable in C++, if you're comfortable in Java, Please do that language, get the answer in that language, get the solution in that language. The other languages can wait. You can learn them later, it's completely fine. So if you have familiarity with one of these languages, then you require a lot of practice. Because as I said, TCS Code Vita is all about breaking down the problem into different sub problems. And do those sub problems then have to further be combined into an overall solution. This breaking down the problem will not come to you very naturally if you don't practice. Without practice, you won't see the patterns. You won't see what kind of problems you have to break it down into. What you will do is you will think of one solution and you will start trying to make that one solution. Without practice, you won't be able to break down the problems. So you require a lot of practice to actually crack any of the code beta questions. Even on a good day, you may not be able to crack all six out of six questions that they will give. There will be six questions, six hours for those questions, but you may not be able to crack all six questions. Your goal is to crack as many questions as possible. If you crack two or three, that's really good. But even to crack two or three, you need a lot of practice. Then the last thing you need to do is think logically and not think in terms of code. And this I will show you with an example uh, of one question where you will think that there is a lot of code to write, but the final code that you have to write is very little actually because we understood the logic, we broke it down into problems. So